Hey guys, so monthly favorites for March 2015. I did not do February, but I, why did I mention that? Anyway, <laughs> um, we're gonna maybe go out of order today. We'll start off with lip products. The first one is the Jordana Easy Liner for lips. I'm sorry if I keep looking at the viewfinder because I'm sorry, this camera seriously just five minutes, ten minutes, and it turns off, and I have just, it's exhausting trying to film. Like, I would film probably like two, three videos a week for you guys if this thing would not turn off. Um, anyway, tangent. This is the Jordana Easy Liner for Lips in Rock and Rose. From what I know, you can find Jordana on various websites. Uh, I think Beauty Joint sells it. Uh, I think Cherry Culture used to. I don't know what's going on with the Cherry Culture website. It's like, there's like no products on it. And like, if there are, there's like one color. Uh, and then Walgreens obviously sells Jordana. I think, does Kmart, some, I think someone mentioned that Kmart does. I have a Kmart like somewhere by me, but it's like the only thing that's there. Like there would never be any other reason for me to go to that area. But anyway, Rock and Rose, absolute like favorite lip color, like lip liner, lip, like lip liner formula. This is a, I would say it's like a warm pinky peach. I would still say it has more of like a brown base to it though. And then on my lips, yeah, it definitely, it's like a my lips but better or my lips but just like my lips does that make any sense anyway i love that the next one that has like that is kind of newer to my collection is the nyx nude beige it is a sharpenable pencil i have one in my purse and i keep one in my vanity and have another backup because this is always sold out i always can never find it when i go to like a display like at ulta or wherever they sell nyx um it's not even at the cvs is by me and then even online, the NYX website constantly sold out of this. So I found one at Ulta and I picked up two off of Beauty Joint. And it's just a really beautiful nude. It's kind of a, it has like a beigey undertone, almost gray on the lips. Uh, I don't have it on today, but if you follow me on Instagram, there are a couple of pictures where I've put it on. And it just, for my lips and my lip shape, this lip liner really creates the shadows around your lips to really, really make your lips look full. The next lip liner I want to talk about is the Sonia Kashuk in Maple. This is obviously just, you can get it at Target. And this is like a cross between the Rock and Rose and the, what did I show you? Nude Beige. So it kind of, it's like a very happy, like in the middle color between these two. And it's just, it has that like beigey undertone, but it leans much more like warm pink, if that makes any sense. I don't know. That's what I like about it. Something a little more high end that I've been loving. A lot. Actually, I like a lot of the Bite Beauty products, but uh, this is the pigment pencil, high pigment pencil in Honey Berry. And I love the way it smells. Every time I open it, I'm like, I always have to take a sniff because it, it smells really good. So this is the high pigment pencil from Bite Beauty in Honey Berry. Yeah, we like. It is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I've been using it. I keep it in my purse, so I use it a lot. I, if you've know, if you carry lip products and I think most of us even if you're not super into makeup and even if you don't keep like a full-on like makeup uh, makeup bag in your purse you'd still have lip products because it's the one thing that I think most of us reapply so I love this it's smooth it's like if you it's not super matte but I mean overall I get the look like the look that I get at the end is very matte and if you tap it into your lips it, it can kind of like be like a pushed in kind of stain so I really love this. So the next uh, lip product I want to talk about is from Clarins. It is the Color Quench Lip Balm in the shade Fig. I have it swatched right here. It is just so glossy and pretty and the color. It, it's not a clear gloss but when you apply it, it doesn't add too much color. It just adds dimension. I don't know how to explain it because it kind of has a pearlized finish. Uh, it just really makes your lips look really pretty. I will link some photos from Instagram below. If you don't follow me there, you can. You don't have to. But I would say it's more personal than my YouTube. And I you get a lot of more close-ups of like lip colors and you know foundations and stuff like that. But I love this a lot. And it's not drying. Because even though I feel like it's weird to suggest that glosses can be drying. But for you guys who wear lip products, like after a couple hours, sometimes depending on the gloss, it feels like it is sucking the hydration from your lips. So... Love that. What do we want to do next? Um, maybe we'll do eyes. Uh, an eye base I've been loving a lot is the Eye and Brow Maestro from Giorgio Armani. I have this in the shade 04 Ombre or Amber. So I take the e.l.f. C brush. 
this brush like this. It is rounded off, fairly dense and synthetic. And I use this and I apply this all over my lids. And then the way this brush is shaped, I can easily like drag it under my lower lash line. And then it creates a really great base. Bases that I've been using before this that I really liked are the Milani Shadow Eyes in Cafe Olay, which is a sharpenable pencil. And then I love the Marc Jacobs Three Shakes. This thing is so awesome, so I'm excited. Um, I'm excited. I don't know. I'm like jumping ahead. I picked up a By Terry Ombre Black Star in the shade Bronze Moon, so I'm curious to see how that one performs. I have not received it yet, but the other thing I want to mention about this, this is the I Am Brow Maestro. So I actually use this same brush and I run it through my brows before I apply um, like an eyebrow pencil. I feel like my eyebrows are really dark today, which I always do them way darker for like videos. If you follow me on Instagram, they're usually a lot lighter, but the lighting and everything, it just takes like, it, even if I pencil in my brows like perfectly, it looks like I have no eyebrows when these lights are on. So um, I use this same brush and I know it sounds crazy, but it really, it just kind of like creates like a base, fills everything in, kind of acts as like a wax slash uh, brow filler. So I've been really loving it. It's like I picked this up a while ago when it first came out probably and I never really reached for it. I tested it out and I was like, oh, whatever. But I've really grown to love it. So this is here as my favorite. Also for brows, I wanted to quickly mention the NYX uh, Micro uh, Brow Pencils. I, ha I have the shades Ash Brown and Black. And I know a lot of people say you shouldn't um, buy or use black ebony eyebrow pencils, which I don't know, I think it's stupid. If the eyebrows, if the eyebrow hairs that are coming out of your eyebrows are black, then yes, you can use it. Um, mine are definitely, but this one, I don't know how to, it's not like a black black. I would say it's a really dark cool brown. So black and ash brown are my shades that I really like. Um, I've always loved this and I use in empties videos. This is the Maybelline Colossal Cat Eyes and it is just what I use for the lower lash line because it is curved and it just coats everything really easily. Uh, I can also use this on my top lashes. I'm like, on a like a really easy day or like a very, and by easy day I mean like where I'm in a rush, I can use this on the top and bottom lashes and it looks pretty good. And then the Maybelline Lash Sensational. Um, this has just been getting a lot of love everywhere. It's a curved brush, it has short bristles, it has long bristles. With the shorter bristles, you can really push it into the lashes to create volume. And then with the longer bristles and the idea that it's kind of curved in certain areas, you can really use that to tease out the length in your lashes. I don't know why tease out the length sounds so questionable to me. Anyway, very suggestive mascara description. Uh, what else? Eyes. Okay. Um, I'm a liquid liner girl. I'm typically a brush tip liner girl. So basically after I've been applying, I'm sorry I keep messing with my hair, but I can, I can feel, you know how like sometimes you can feel your hair like moving towards the center of your chin and it's gonna like eat your chest area? Anyway, that's how it feels. This is the Ico Visualized Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Marine and this is brush tip and it just comes out like a very kind of deep dark navy. I could easily use this alone, but when I use it on top of my black liner, it just does something extra. Like if you have, I would say maybe the green or hazel or brown eyes, using a blue liner just kind of really makes it pop in a way that's not obvious. It does something that you can see, it kind of just brightens your eyes and makes the whites of your eyes brighter versus, which in turn makes your iris look brighter also. So. The next two are from Laura Geller. I think this was a set of three, a blue, a black, and a green. And it's like $29.50 or something. I picked it up off of Be Glowing, and uh, I think they were doing a 20% off too. So it was really cheap for the three liners. Now these are a felt tip, and but the colors are gorgeous. So obviously, I mean, I apply my usual, usual liquid liner with a brush tip and then I just go over it with one of these and it looks so pretty. So these are the two Laura Geller ones. This is a blue and this is a green and that comes with a black too that I don't know. I don't use that one as often but these are really pretty. So if you're kind of looking for fun ways of like, you know, some people like to add color on the lower lash line. I'm more of somebody who likes to play with my liquid liner color so that's just me. More on the eye makeup front, I figured I would talk about my favorite transition colors. This is Burberry's Chestnut. This is in the original formula. They have since come out with um, the wet and dry and then the glow one. So that's Chestnut and I just love this to pieces. 
it is like my favorite. Um, a color I've been liking in the crease slash transition is Bobbi Brown's Camel. It's really a hideous color. It is like this like uh, mustardy brown. Uh, just I don't know. I feel like I have probably not that I vomit very often, but I may have vomited a color book similar to this. Uh, but that's what that is, and it really I have it. I feel like if I get closer to the camera, it's gonna look less. It's gonna look more blurry. But I do have it all up in here today. And then, kind of in the crease, I popped in this NYX blush in Cocoa. This color is so like warm and pretty. And I don't know. I have the original NYX taupe blush, and I really like it. I feel like the new one is really kind of powdery. Uh, but this is the blush in Cocoa right here maybe on my finger yeah see that's much more uh, intense and that's more how it translates on the finger the thing about nyx blushes like the old version that's like this and quilted is it quilted i don't know what to call it it's like it's like a raised prism like kind of whatever i felt like these were really really good because they were not really powdery but they would really show up on your cheeks really beautifully whereas the ones now i really think are kind of powdery so it's just my opinion there Another thing I've been loving, I'm going to do a video, I think kind of like a small small slash short palette video. Um, as you know, I've been trying to really clear out my like big palettes. Like the, like the only two I have now really are the two Chocolate by Palettes from Too Faced. Uh, I think those are like the largest palettes I have. And then everything is like way smaller, like eight shades, six shades, quads, quince, things like that. But I found this at TJ Maxx. It is from Paula Dorf and it's called The Perfect Nudes. If you find this, grab it. It's like $5.99 and it is just really beautiful. The camera's not going to pick it up, but like they're really, really beautiful, neutral, shimmery shades. No glitter, no sparkle, just like really, really beautiful colors. I picked up another one and I gave one and I sent one to my friend. I also sent her the, the Makeup Forever in Blue in Sepia palette. If you are at TJ Maxx, here it is. Let me just show you. <laughs> It looks like this. This was $15.99 at TJ Maxx. Like, I don't know. I just picked up two, so you know, that's what I do. <laughs> it's like one for me, one for her. So you get all nudes and like this blue in here, and it is really good. I don't know if it's like the new formula that they came out with, but the, the shadows still perform really, really well. So yeah, if you see this, $5.99, pick it up, pick it up from TJ Maxx. I don't know if it's at Marshall's also, but if it is, grab it. Okay, complexion products. Uh, we are going to do kind of primer type things first. This is the Cover Effects Blemish Treatment Primer. And uh, this was sent to me in the, the whole bunch of like things that Cover Effects had sent for, for me to kind of play with and review. This has 0.5% salicylic acid in it. So not the 1% or 1.5 to 2% that you would get in like a typical treatment cream, but this is a treatment primer. So I have been really loving this to treat my blemish or blemishes that I can feel are coming under my makeup during the day. So it's clear and it has uh, a slight kind of silicone-y feel, but more watery than that. And I just, it's just fantastic. It just, if you want something that you can use under your makeup that will also kind of treat something that's happening, this is really great. I love it, especially for like very minor spots. Like by the end of the day, I don't see it. So I absolutely love this. The Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. Uh, and it has like a little bit of like a brightening property. It's like a light pinkish color. And I think uh, Smashbox was doing 50 off 150 like $50 off of a 150 purchase. And I have not tried Smashbox in a really, really long time, like four years maybe. I, it, just, it just has no buy appeal for me. So I have decided to use that opportunity to try out some of the newer things that I've been wanting to try, but I didn't just want to like pick up at random. And I think to round out my order, I grabbed this and I love it. Like, you know how like, when you make those like random purchases and you're like, oh, okay, I need to get free shipping or I need to get like this discount. This has proven to be so awesome. So I just apply it on my under eyes and it really does create like a more moisturized area and it does brighten slightly. I don't know how much I find that it brightens, but it definitely hydrates. And then sometimes I'll just like, take a bit and I'll like run it like on the tip of my nose too because they get a little dry there in the winter. Fantastic. Love, love, loving this. Okay. Uh, contour? No. Yeah, we'll do contour. Uh, I have the NYX Wonder Stick. I have this in the shade Light. Now, I mean, I'm usually, I would think I'd get like a medium or something, but I don't know, I'm kind of a light medium shade, so I can kind of go either way with 
complexion products. But I grabbed, uh, there was a, the display at Ulta, like you can test all of them, and the, the medium one showed up on me really nicely, but it was really warm and I just didn't really like it. So I picked up light, and light is really cool toned. Um, this is what the contour shade looks like on the Light Wonder Stick. And I don't know, like, the, I wish the highlighter part of it was like the same, uh, what's the word, the same formula as the contour, but it's a little, it's not that it's like super drying, but it's not as emollient and it's just, it's just okay. I'm not like really into the highlight side of this, but the contour side I love because a, it's really emollient and it glides on really nicely, but the reason I love the NYX Contour Stick in light so much is because it is a great base for the Dolce & Gabbana Tan Blush. A lot of people, I would say, who are light to medium or fair could use this as your contour. So this is the NYX uh, Contour side, and then this is the Dolce & Gabbana Blush and Tan, and they just layer really, really beautifully. So, um, and I've been like an avid user of this product for a while. This is like quite, you can't see this, but it's quite like, what's the word? Concave? Right. Um, and I love this a lot. Uh, but I would recommend, <laughs> if you can find really great bronzers from Dolce & Gabbana, buy that over this if you don't want this shade because you get way more product in those. Like the blushes, I feel like, are the same price as like maybe the face powders and the bronzers, but you get way less product. Um, next is the Becca Low Light Highlight Perfecting Palette. This is the poured version. They've come out with a pressed version, which is pressed powders. Um, but I love this so hard. <laughs> uh, this is the contour shade and this is the highlight shade. Like, I'm going to look like a big mess when I'm done here. But I love this contour. I use like any kind of like thick... I use this brush. <laughs> this is the Zoeva face shape brush and I like blend this into my cheeks. I don't have it today. Today I did the, what did I do today? Today I used the Dolce & Gabbana and the NYX. Um, and then this, the poured one you get, ooh, there we go. The poured shade for the highlight you get in here is Opal. And this you already, um, not this you already, uh, Becca has since come out with poured versions of almost all of their kind of skin perfectors. There's Opal, Moonstone, Topaz, uh, I think of the other one. Moonstone, did I say that? Topaz, Opal. Uh, but they have those now. I have those kind of in my Sephora shopping cart. I probably won't get them. I'm quite happy with the Opal that's in here. Um, lastly, for the contour section is the LA Girl Pro Conceal High Definition, con high definition Concealer. I have the shade Toast. I would say that out of all the shades, at least when I purchased, this was like the most cool toned. It still goes on quite warm on me, maybe more neutral. And the thing with this is it doesn't budge. So I kind of like, it's a brush tip, so you just kind of can place it really specifically on your face. And then I kind of blend it out with this brush or kind of more of like a smaller stipple brush. And it creates a beautiful base for bronzer. It's obviously a really great contour, but the best part is it just doesn't really move because it's a, I would consider it a very like a more dry formula. So when these first came out, like I want to say three, four years ago, I had bought a few to use like on my face and under my eyes. Under my eyes, it was a definite no-go. Like it is, it's too dry. But as, um, as a contour or bronzer, it is so, so good. Um, and I heard about this from Andrew, from Andrew's Off Day. He actually did a, uh, was it recently? He did a video using this, showing you how to use this as a contour. So I will link that video below if you want to see this in action because you know me. I do so many tutorials. More face complexion products. This is the Gucci, well we'll start here. This is the Soleil Tan de Chanel Bronze Universal. This is an oldie but a goodie. I mean everyone at some point buys this, loves this, uses other things, come back, comes back to it. It looks like this. It looks really orange. I actually have it on all over my face today. I actually used the Dolce & Gabbana and the NYX to kind of lay in the contour on my cheeks and that's it. And then this is just like all over my face. I, I use this also today to kind of contour my nose a little bit. It's just, it's, you can just see it. Like I can see it in the viewfinder so I'm hoping it comes across that way. It's just really like pretty. It's not like 
contoured or chiseled but it just it adds it does add really beautiful warm dimension to your face and it smells amazing on top of that kind of not very heavily i use this uh, gucci bronzer in the shade indian sand and this i think is the only like matte version in like out of the four bronzes that they have i have tried out some gucci stuff i would say just probably eye stuff and bronzer that's about it actually I'm curious to try their, their Lustrous foundation. Is it the Lustrous? Whatever, the Gucci foundation. That's probably the only other thing I'm really interested in. I'm, I don't know. It, it, the Gucci, for me, the best thing about the Gucci stuff is their packaging. I'm not like super wowed by like their eyeshadow formula or anything, but the bronzer is quite good. I really do like this. Concealers, my favorite things. I love foundations and concealers. I'm just like a face-based person. Um, the Cover FX Cream Concealer, this is in G Medium. Like I mentioned this many times in a favorites video or I've used it today as my face concealer, so I have it kind of to conceal some kind of dark spots, healing blemishes, I guess, and then around my mouth a little bit, a little bit under my nose, just, I love this stuff. I love MAC Pro Longwear also, but I feel like this has a teensy bit more coverage, and because it's a cream, I, I just feel like it lasts a little bit longer. Three kind of eye concealers. We'll start off with these two first. This is the Clarence Instant Concealer. This is in the shade 01. I have, I don't have this on under my eyes today, but I first heard of this when the Pixie Boo girls were talking about it and using it in like their videos and stuff. This stuff is so good I and mean, you get 15 milliliters, that's a lot of concealer. I mean, what is this one? This is the Dior Skin Nude Concealer and you get 10 milliliters in here. And then the cover effects you get 10 milliliters also. So 15 milliliters in this. This is like huge. Um, and it's beautiful, it's brightening, it's not too drying. I feel like it's hard to say that uh, concealers are moisturizing. There are very few concealers I find that are moisturizing. One is probably the Benefit Fake Up, and that requires work. Like whenever I apply that, it's when like I can nothing can be helped. Like it's just so dry. So I use that, and I like tap it in, and I don't really set it. It's just, it's very hard to say, at least for me, to say that a concealer is moisturizing. But this one is great. It doesn't show, and it sets really well like you can use a powder but it's not necessary and the same kind of goes for this the dior skin nude concealer i really like this i have in the shade 001 i know there are people who are lighter than me that are using 002 so maybe i grabbed the wrong color but this never looks too light on me i don't think because if you've watched my videos i'm not really someone that goes for like a super bright under eye i'm not someone that wants to be like super bright in this area and super dark in this area and then super bright here and then super dark here i really kind of like for the face to kind of flow. Um, even if it makes me look fat or whatever, it's, it looks more real. So I like this concealer also for the under eyes. The last one I'm gonna talk about is the Giorgio Armani Maestro Eraser, and this is in the shade four. I'm around an MT25, 27, probably more closer to 25. And this I used, I have this on today. I have it on the under eye area, and I kind of have it on my face a little bit. I love this. I think it's very hard to find a concealer that you can use, or a shade of concealer that you can use on your face and on your eyes, or on, under your eyes. Oh, I don't know why I'm trying to swatch concealer for you, but the consistency of this is very liquidy. I absolutely love it. I feel like I really want them to have, okay, I know they have a Maestro foundation, uh, but I want this to be, like, I want this in a big tube, <laughs> and I want to use this on my face as foundation. I probably could. It might look too yellow. And this, again, you get 15 milliliters here. Giorgio Armani is on Sephora now, or, I mean, it has been for a while, but that's good news. I always thought it was odd that YSL was on there and Giorgio Armani wasn't, but... Okay. <laughs> mm, I'm, like, losing up my patience. My camera has turned off, like, 20 times already. So I really love this concealer. The consistency is very liquidy. But it covers like I feel like the coverage and it covers very evenly I don't feel like not that like liquid products can skip but this is like extra smooth you know like I don't know and like I said shade 4 it kind of works under my eyes if I use a brightener under it and it like works all over my face so, last but not least I will talk about this powder this is the ambient lighting powder and diffuse light if you've been watching this channel for a while dim light and diffuse light are like my favorites I've just 2013, it was like all about these. And then 2014, I kind of veered away from this, trying out new products. Um, I kind of fell in love with the Laura Mercier Loose Mineral Powder. But I started dipping into my powder collection again after Goss Makeup Artist did that video on like buffing, or I think he posted it on Instagram first, then he did a video, then he did a demo video, whatever. Long story. 
Um, I will list, list, link uh, Instagram, an Instagram picture below. I'll, I'll like label everything because I know I've mentioned a lot of Instagram pictures. But I did the technique he mentioned where you apply all of your makeup like usual. Your foundation, your concealer, your powder, your blush, your bronzer, your highlight. And then at the end you go in with a powder and then you just buff it onto your entire face with a brush. Now I use this for to set my under eyes with like I'll apply my foundation with a damp beauty blender and I'll use this and I'll kind of set my under eyes with it. But to employ his method of buffing powder, he's, he mentioned using a loose powder, pressed powder, anything. Just He said drugstore high end all works the same. I've tried out a whole bunch and I like a lot of the powders I use but this kind of won out in the end, the diffused light. Because these powders are kind of also meant to filter your face, uh, something like this used with this method, it just, it's so beautiful. Um, I find that using a brush that is kind of rounded off, it can be smaller than this, but I would say something rounded off, something densely packed at the bottom and very splayed and soft at the top works really well for this. So the Rite Aid Renewal brush, fantastic. This is the Sephora IT brush. If you have this in your collection, definitely try it out, but I don't think Sephora does this line anymore. And then, ooh, this is not the brush I wanted to show you. Um, this is the Real Techniques blush brush. Again, it's kind of like really dense, densely like packed as in like lots of bristles, but they're very soft and kind of rounded off at the top. So these are the brushes I have found that work really well for that buffing technique. Um, I'll link his video below and like the people he follows, or I follow them too on Instagram, who, whatever, the origin of this technique and I was actually explaining this thing to my friend and she's like super into makeup too and she was just like well that totally makes sense because when you apply mineral powder like bare minerals you have to really buff it in for it to look good so I mean I would I would like to think that the root of that whole like method of filtering your face with powder like that's kind of the root of it that it totally makes sense when she mentioned it to me Anyway, that is my monthly favorites. I feel like I talked a lot and I told you about a lot of products, but that's just what I've been loving lately. Also, I didn't do February favorites, so I kind of wanted to catch you guys up on what I've been loving. And what else do I want to share with you? FAQ video. Like I said, this camera has turned off on me 25 times. 25 times during the filming of this video, and I'm really about to like lose my business right now. I don't even know what, what kind of business that would be, but... Uh, I might do something where, because I've already collected all your questions from Instagram and from the, the video. Uh, I might do one where I'm like not sitting, you know, sitting awesome. So in the middle of that, it just turned off again. So hopefully I can get this all out before it turns off again. And that's probably why I keep looking at the viewfinder, because if I don't catch it, I will keep on talking and I won't even know. So, I might do the FAQ video where like I answer like two or three questions every day and then I'll create all one big video, you know what I'm saying? So like I don't have to like be frustrated with my camera. Because an FAQ video will probably involve me talking close to like 45 minutes or an hour and then I would edit it down and in that time I'm sure this camera will turn off on me a lot and it will be hard for me to figure out where I left off talking. Whereas when I'm talking about products, whenever I look at the camera and it's like turned off, I can be like, oh, well, I was holding this product. So I'll either start talking about this product again or I'll like grab the one before that. You know what I mean? Anyway, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these favorites. I will see you guys real soon. Take care and bye-bye.